Are you recording? Yeah, I'm recording now. Okay. I think like almost every home recording starts with one of those. Is it know. on? Is it on? Is it on? <laughs> so here I've gotten to the end and I'm about to make a final pass and then I gotta loop my thread back through. And then I gotta weave some scrap thread so when I take it off the loom it doesn't unravel at the end before I time it out. So and the last pass, last beat. Sometimes it gets a little crooked, but you know, sometimes it evens out when, you know, it looks a little crooked there, but it evens out when, you know, when things are all said and done. So I'm going to clip this off here. Mm, that looks good. Now I double this back through here. And so now I'm going to pull it through with a crochet hook or you could use the hook you use your head off. I find that snags a lot more than than this hook so yeah. occasionally what has happened is I have actually like gotten it too short and so I'm needing to go back and like actually take one row off and then do it over again so here we are I'm going to go under here pick it up Is it outside one really loose? I'm not sure all of a sudden done. Yeah, not any loose than it should be. I wanna beat this nice and I'm gonna thread it a little bit farther through since this is such a large weed. Did you lose your hooky thing? Yes, I drop it all the time. I don't see it. Okay. <laughs> it was underneath your Shush. <laughs> I lose this thing constantly. Mm -hmm. Alright. So there are tests too. I got it special for him and he loses it all the time. I know. I'm a horrible, horrible, thankless person. Exactly. I don't know why you ever married me. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Go a little bit more. You don't have to go as far like an inch or stuff, but I always am a little paranoid about it unraveling, so you know, I. He's a paranoid man. I'm Someone's not. always watching him. Yes, like right now. I'm trying to contribute. Yeah, to my paranoia. <laughs> Alright, so that's good. Now, I like to trim everything at the end because sometimes when you take the tension off, things expand or contract. So, I always leave all the trimming till the end. It seems to hold up better when you trim at the end. Alright, so that's done with that. So, now I need my scrap bed. And so, I like to make like four or five passes with this. So, when I take it off the loom, this last row right here doesn't unravel. This stuff does. And then I, then I pull my ends out one at a time or four or five ends out at a time and tie them together. So we were up that went down again. That doesn't help. You wanna loop it around and Like I said, this doesn't have pretty now since we're going to take this off anyway. You, know, you don't even have to secure it really. I guess you could cut it here. No. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. How close are you to ending? Well, I've only got three or four more passes. Just whenever you feel like it gets nice and, you know, compact and whatnot. Mm. It's in a bad color. I might do rows and things of that one of these days. 
I have a lot of this blue yarn left over. I bought another skein thinking I might kind of look short, but I didn't, so. For some reason, it always takes more going along the warp than it does going along the weft. So the weft always seems to take less for me. Well, part um, of the thing is that you have all this space you aren't weaving through. Oh, yeah, but it's among other things, I think there's less per inch. There's only like 8 per inch this way, and there's 10 per inch that way. It's just the way it works, I guess. This will be the last one. That's done. And I like to keep my... I'm just going to keep my scrap yarn on the same length because it's going to fall off the unit here anyways. I'm not going to bother cutting it or looping it back or anything. Now that I'm done, we get to cut it off. So now we get to cut the loops off the back. You know, um, I'm going to cut it right about... I mean, if you want to maximize the length of your scrap yarn, you can cut it right here or even just once across there. Uh, make sure it's not the tension is not too tight on it. You might even want to relax it just a little bit so that it won't pull, you know, when you cut it. But you want it, you know, because otherwise you put all the pressure like on two strings and you might mess up your thing. Alright, so I guess this is probably good. And then you can trim your ends when you're done anyway, which is what I usually do so I know they're all the same length. And that's that. Off the loom, pull it out of the heddle. Look at all that fuzz on the back of the heddle. Pick that up again. Oh. That was cool. <laughs> there's a line there's of blue more, fuzz. There's more. There's when more. There's more. Doing it. He pulls it off as he's going. <clears throat> then I like to leave it while I, on it while I tie my knots. I'll lock it. Roll it up and lock it. You can even uh, clamp it to the table if you want, but you'll have a stand so. I won't do that. Alright, so here I'm going to tie our knot. This is the fun part. This is the fun part, you say? No. <laughs> Not really. And right now, it seems with this size uh, thread, it's best to do four strings at a time. Since they're 160, I also mean it'll make my ends even. 160 is divisible by four. Um, you know, you want to try and pick, otherwise, you're going to get knots that are uneven because one has Different three sizes. or five or something in it. Whatever your remainder is going to be. That's such a math word. Remainder? Yes. Things remain all the time whether it's a math or not. But it's such a math word. Please give me a look. I don't even know where the camera's pointing. It's in your ear up? right now. Oh, and you... They do not want to see my ears. <laughs> you sure? Okay, there may be like one or two people on the internet that want to look at my ears, but they're probably strange people and I don't want them looking at my ears, so don't <laughs> do that. I think you're going about it. That's All right, so, so weird. I, pull, I pull these four strings free. Notice how the scrap yarn keeps everything else tight, so that's nice. And then the easiest way to do these knots, I find, is to have at least, you know, four or five inches and then double it over, curl it, and then put it through these, bring these two fingers out, and then pull the knot as close to it and then tighten it at the very end. All right, and then make it nice and tight there. But don't over, you know, don't over tighten and don't come up short. So it takes a lot of practice, I guess. Well, maybe not a lot, but some practice to make sure every knot's, you know, kind of at the same spot. And I like these knots. They look nice. There are a lot of other ways. I've tried braiding it. I've tried single knots. Single knots is a lot of knot tying. Mm -hmm. You can do four at a time. It's a little bit less. But, I mean, you can easily spend 30, 40 minutes just tying knots. You know. So I'm not going to record the whole thing, but just the yeah. first few and then probably the end of it. Yeah. And this is, you know, he does the same thing at the end when he's done as well. Yeah. you got two ends you got to tie knots on, you know. And then, so always try to make sure you get four so you don't end up with an odd number. Or, you know, you could do five if you like. Depends but, on how many strands you have in the yeah. first place, really. But usually, what you want to try to do is always, you know, make it an even number so you get the up and downs together. You know, so you're not like one up, one down. You know, and then alternating. You know, so. But yeah. Any other last minute tips before I shut no. this off? 
Bye. Bye for now.